the scientific of uh, these uh, astronomical events. Um, it's very interesting that people uh, have so many uh, misconceptions regarding astronomical events. Um, I remember um, in 2000, I guess in 2016, there was a transit and we observed that transit at our uh, observatory, observatory and there were people from media and they asked us questions about that transit. And we told them that this is a rare event and this uh, happens uh, once, uh, once in a decade. And the next day when I read the newspaper, it was written that, uh, that we observed a very rare uh, phenomena that happens in 10,000 years. So you have to be very responsible when you are communicating science with the general public. Um, and uh, also, um, I remember uh, there was um, I eclipse a few years back, and uh, I read um, in a, a newspaper that uh, a, a very rare eclipse uh, is going to occur, and uh, you, you will see the, uh, the sky will be uh, completely dark during day. And I was amazed because it was a partial eclipse in Pakistan and uh, it, the total eclipse uh, could not be observed in Pakistan. So it, it was totally wrong that the sky is going to dark during the day. So you have to be very responsible when you are writing about science. And uh, also you can, uh, to promote astronomy in Pakistan, you can write about uh, different resources. You can write about astronomical observatories in Pakistan, astronomical societies. Uh, you can write about science centers. You can write about planetariums so that more and more people uh, get involved in activities related to astronomy. Also, it's very important as uh, being National Astronomy Education Coordinator for Pakistan, I try to uh, promote astronomy education in Pakistan. I work for International Astronomical Union. Office of Astronomy and Education. So I, I uh, sometimes I've been funding from IAU and I try to organize astronomy education events in Pakistan. So you can highlight the importance of astronomy education and outreach because it's not about only it's not only about astronomy, it's about uh, science and technology. As we know that doing research in astronomy, we can develop technology. So you can uh, highlight the importance of astronomy outreach and education. So uh, I have discussed with you plenty of topics and I think now it's time to take this journey to the next level. So let's uh, do uh, this activity. If they, in this activity, we will see how astronomers tell about their research and research articles and how science communicators describe it to journal public. So uh, I asked you about the celestial objects uh, that you love. I, I love studying pulsars. So uh, I, I, I will give you a, um, an example from pulsars. So this is a website. I will search on this website uh, scientific articles related to pulsars. And when uh, I do so, let's see. So you can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Okay, so uh, this is a website, uh, science.com. I will share these links with you. And if I search here any topic related to I, I search Pulsar. So you can see there are uh, so many uh, science communications related to pulsar, new kind of pulsar, may explain how mysterious black window system evolved. Fast spinning white drops pulsar, the second we have ever discovered. So this seems interesting to me. So let's uh, explore this one. Okay, so in this activity, we will see how astronomers tell about their research and research papers. And of course, these research papers are for researchers. But if we have to share these research findings with general public, we, uh, of course, uh, science communicators do it uh, in a different way. 
So let's explore this thing. And of course, there are lots of ads uh, as uh, Bakai is just around the corner. So, uh, okay. The fast spinning white dwarf pulsar, the second we have ever discovered, sheds light on how stars evolve. Okay, so this is the article. Let's go to the end of this page. And you can see, here you see, there is a reference to the original article. So actually this research was published in Nature Astronomy. And if you go to this research paper, you will see that this is the research paper. If you scroll, scroll down, you will find it very difficult to understand, of course, for the very first time. So, so this is the research paper. So you can see the title. Title is totally different. The title that uh, I read here is different. It's very interesting. Fast spinning white drop pulsar, the second we have ever discovered. So this is very interesting. Sheds light on how stars evolve. But if I read here, you can see the title is different. A 5.3 minute period pulsing white drop in a binary detected from a radio to X-ray. So it's for researchers. So that can have some idea that this Research paper is related to radio astronomy. This research paper is related to X-ray astronomy. And they have detected a pulsing white dwarf. This is something very real because we have discovered so many pulsing neutron stars, but they have discovered something new. They have discovered a pulsing white dwarf. And this white dwarf is in a binary system. That, they, that means that there are two stars in this system. And the period of the pulsation is 5.3. So they have given all the scientific information in the title that is uh, interesting for any researcher. And if you uh, go down, if you scroll down, you, you can see that abstract. There are so many uh, authors. You can see the abstract. And there, uh, there are some uh, plots. So you can see complicated plots. Figures. Okay, you can see about, uh, some explanation about the data and the methods. You can see photometry, spectroscopy, so X-ray astronomy, radio astronomy, archival data, and all these things. So it's very complicated. Of course, it's very complicated for a person who is uh, not related to field of astronomy. So. Here comes the role of uh, science communicators. So if you try to communicate this research, the general public, so of course you have to use very simple language and you have to use um, some uh, illustrations, you have to use some figures. So you can see there is a figure that was not part of that research paper. It's for general public to give them an idea that this is a binary system. There are two stars, one is white dwarf and, and the other one is red box okay so it's for uh, explanation and now uh, there is the uh, communication of that finding okay let me show you some uh, other thing i will i will read that for you later so if uh, i want to read more science communication uh, about this article you can see this is the original article and it is discussed on several websites. Another example, discovery of white dwarf pulsar sheds light on stellar evolution. Here is another example, white dwarf pulsar discovery sheds light on star evolution. There is a little bit uh, difference in these two titles. White dwarf pulsar discovered sheds light on star evolution. So you can see that there are plenty of examples of uh, uh, communications of this research paper. Another example, discovery of white drop pulsar sheds light on stellar evolution. And this is, I guess, the same example. Yeah. Okay. 
so let me uh, discuss any one article with you i guess um, okay. so i would like to discuss any one so these are all these are discussing the same yeah okay i am discussing uh, the one which is available on universe today website okay you can see the same picture uh, uh, the same picture is used on this website okay so you can see this picture and the title is astronomer find a white dwarf pulsar so why it is very interesting and we know that there are different types of stars and when stars uh, stars are formed in clusters and their evolution their life depends on their initial mass and when stars die they can be uh, in uh, die in form of black holes neutron stars neutron stars can be seen sometime as pulsars giving us pulses radio signal and the third option is white dwarf so when a star uh, dies it can be uh, it can become black hole neutron star or pulsar and or it can become white dwarf the interesting thing that is that in research they found something that have qualities of two possibilities it is a white dwarf and it is pulsing it's pulsating so this is something to grab the attention of general public they highlighted that astronomers find a white dwarf pulsar because usually we expect a neutron star pulsar so they they uh, write a very uh, they, they, i guess this title is very interesting and then then they discuss some uh, properties of that white dwarf pulsar that uh, about the size about its mass its temperature its magnetic field and then the is spin this is uh, uh, all the stars are spinning so it's spin so they they discuss these properties and they discuss that it's in a binary system uh, which has one uh, white dwarf and one red dwarf now uh, they here are some details about this system so this is the name of the white dwarf uh, pulsar they uh, discovered if you compare this flow of this science communication with this article it's totally different you can see that it's totally different there are lots of lots of references there are lots of uh, graphs right but there isn't any uh, complicated uh, figure or graph in this science communication but they are giving you all the information they can and all all this information is very accurate so uh, they are telling you that this is the second white dwarf pulsar ever discovered the first one was discovered in 2016 and this one is discovered uh, i guess few months back in this month june in june 2023 so the, uh, here are some uh, further characteristic of that uh, white dwarf pulsar and then they pose a question that what what is the mechanism behind this pulsation this radio signal they think that maybe magnetic field is responsible for that and then further they discuss if magnetic field is responsible for that then the only explanation we have is dynamo model and then in the next step they discuss the dynamo model by giving us the example of magnetic field of earth which is due to the core of the earth dynamo model again so and here you can see another figure which was not uh, in the research paper and then of course we have only discover, uh, discovered only two white dwarf uh, pulsars so there is a need of discovering more and more pulsars so that we can understand them better so they have discovered only two pulsars after the discovery of first white dwarf pulsar they Uh, did a very uh, thorough research. They did a very thorough search for these pulsars, and they found 
after so many years first one was discovered in 2016 and the next one was discovered in 2022 so there are some future research avenues and if you see there is a reference to the original research paper but if you try to go through this research paper it's it's very difficult and it's only for the researcher so i guess this is the best way to start your scientific uh, communication is the best way to start your astronomy communication here are all the links that i discussed with you so i i will share these links with you and this is how you can compare if you ever uh, try to write um, any astronomical uh, if you try to communicate any astronomical research article if you try to uh, communicate it you can compare these two things you have seen a very uh, prominent difference between the length of these two you have seen difference between uh, their titles so i have uh, given you two examples discovery of white dwarf pulsar shed light on stellar evolution and they are talking about so many things that are uh, interesting for any astronomer and this see this title discovery of second ever white dwarf pulsar so this highlights that something rare uh, has been discovered you can compare you 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 have to spend some time exploring the science communication comparing with the original research article you will see there is a clear difference between the style of this research article and the science communication you have to check for clarity because you are communicating uh, these research finding with journal public maybe they don't have a uh, very much understanding of physics so uh, you can use some figures that are not part of that research paper but that, that can help the your audience and you want uh, you uh, you should not use so, so many jargons in your uh, science communication you you will not go to uh, in very depth of that topic of course you are not communicating with researcher you are communicating with journal public or you can, are communicating with science students so uh, there is a limit to the depth in which you will go and make sure you yeah, of course you are um, communicating science with journal public or other audience but you have to be uh, you have to make sure that the scientific accuracy is preserved and if you compare these two there there were uh, you see there are so many uh, references citations and research article but but when you are communicating that research finding you you are uh, only giving reference of that particular research paper so this is the activity i think that you can do later on and this will help you uh, learn a lot about science communication especially in field of astronomy so these are some links uh, some websites that you can explore i i usually uh, read articles on these websites because even for a researcher it's very difficult to go through the research paper and understand all everything so it's very easy it's very time saving that you read articles uh, science communication of these articles and if it's related to your research area you can read the whole research article so uh, when uh, students um, come to me for research supervision i ask them to read science communication of these research articles and i also ask them to examine the quality of science in these science communication so there is an uh, also very interesting way of communicating science with people is apart astronomy picture of the day so let me give you uh, an example for that yes so here you can see there is a picture or uh, and is there a different image or a photograph of our fascinating universe is featured along with a brief description written by a professor so here is a picture you can see and the title is lightning on jupiter we have seen lightning on earth right and but it's very interesting to see lightning on jupiter and there is some description so i guess this is the best way to start with this is a very best way to communicate astronomy with general public to start with a picture give the science of that astronomical object phenomena or event so here are some websites for you and with all that being said uh, there there is a call of call to action so you can attend the events related to astronomy you can join astronomy
the societies you can join uh, the uh, observation of, of astronomical events and then you uh, you should try to share your knowledge and passion of astronomy with others so that's all from my side your questions are more than welcome Okay, so okay. I guess uh, you, Reba, Reba has raised her hand. She would like to ask you a question. Okay. Okay, so my question after listening to everything you've just said, uh, my attention keeps going back to the Apollo mission you mentioned. Uh, I wanted to ask your opinion on that. Is, is it true that uh, humans actually went on the moon? Okay, okay. That's an interesting question. Okay, uh, I have uh, very much familiar with this question. Okay, first of all, um, I told you that there were Apollo missions, a, a lot, uh, so many Apollo missions from Apollo 1 to Apollo 10. In these 10 missions, we just learned how to send human to moon, right? And in Apollo mission, we uh, we finally got success. We sent human to the moon, and they walked on the moon. And people are very much uh, curious to know if it's real or if it's not real. In my opinion, it's real. It was broadcasted live at that moment, and people asked about how the flag looks like this when there uh, there was no air on the surface of moon. Of course, there were. Uh, there, there is no air on the surface of moon, but we know that th that flag was uh, of, made of a different material as compared to the flags that we have on Earth. We, know, we knew that there, uh, there will be no air on the surface of moon. So if we uh, take a flag made of cloth, then it, it will look like this. So that was a different flag. So people uh, keep pointing out things that, it, uh, that this thing shows that it, it was fake. I really don't think so. so. Being science teacher and researcher, we we, we discuss this thing uh, so many times with our seniors, with our teachers, and uh, we guess that it's true that man went to moon. And even in 2023, in near future, NASA is planning to send more uh, people on moon, and this time they are uh, planning to send a female to the moon. Yes, uh, I've heard about that. But my question is that if humans went to the moon in the 19s, yes, 1900s, right? Yes. Uh, why didn't they continue that journey? If, 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 if it was possible, uh, I think 2023 is too late for us to go back again. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Um, uh, I... I was uh, with the school students last week, and they gave me. They they kept asking me the same question, and it's, it's very true that there there is a huge gap between our last visit to Moon and in 2023. Right? Actually, it's all about our priorities. First, we, uh, man, human uh, was very curious, was very excited to go on Moon, and then we reached on Moon. We are now trying to go far beyond in space. Now our next target is not Moon, but Mars. And we know right now that to go to Mars, it's a one-way mission because you can go there, but the, our current knowledge, uh, level of knowledge uh, does not allow us to come back. So it's a one-way journey. So we are now not very much interested in Moon. We are uh, using the International Space Station and we are using the lunar missions to advance our lab knowledge to go to Mars and even further in space. So you are very right that uh, there is a huge gap between our last visit and 2023. And in 2000, I guess 30, NASA is uh, again planning to send human to uh, moon. But well, the main thing is that we are now more interested in Mars and far more. And um, uh, Miss, there was also another reason, I guess, uh, the budget issue for NASA in US, uh, they were not interested to fund moon journeys uh, more in 90s. Uh, they were involved in other issues, political issues. So the funding issue was also there, I guess. Yeah, they are spending a lot of money 
on international space station they are increasing yes. the size of international space station every year now six astronauts can work on international space station and can do the experiments uh, which will enable us to spend life uh, spend time on mars so i guess it's all about priorities now we are prioritizing international space station and we are looking to go far beyond uh, okay other questions okay miss uh, Ansh anshra ask another question how would we connect pure science topic with general public i mean what makes interesting for them okay nice question um uh, in in the last example uh, i've shown you that they highlighted the fact that it was something that is very rare. It was second ever discovered white dwarf pulsar. So they highlighted how, why it is rare. Even you can make the daily life topics interesting. If you write about astronomical events, like if you write about eclipses and you give a regional touch that this eclipse can be seen in Pakistan at this time, at from these locations, I think it will be interesting for public. You, you can make any topic interesting. First of all, you, you should have uh, complete knowledge of that topic, and then you will use your curiosity how you, uh, to make it interesting. I guess. You can make any topic interesting, even if it's a re recent science discovery or if uh, it's a daily life phenomena. Okay. Mm, you can ask questions. Uh, you can raise your hand. Anyone else? You know, they, uh, if you are interested in astrobiology, uh, so there is a network uh, in Pakistan, astrobiology network of Pakistan. So I guess uh, you can explore their website. So people are working in field of astronomy in Pakistan. It's not like that. But no Pakistani working field of astronomy. And very interesting, um, a few days back I read uh, an article. Um, in my presentation, I told you about the intersection of astronomy and technology. Uh, so, some astronomers developed a machine learning algorithm to classify galaxies in deep sky images. They, they take deep star images, they uh, apply that compu a computer algorithm on that, and then this algorithm classify galaxies, that this galaxy is of this type, this is spiral galaxy, this is irregular galaxies, and so on. Recently, some researchers from um, any other university made some changes in that algorithm and used it on satellite images to monitor the movement of endangered animals. So this is how the scientific research the, in field of astronomy can develop, uh, can help humanity on Earth. You can use it in different forms. Also, also I guess there was this uh, uh, cyclone, uh, and we were observing it from space. Uh, so that helped us to prepare in advance, I guess. So. And when, we, when people are very much concerned about the application of astronomy, so I ask them, what is this? You are using your cell phone every day and night, and you are using uh, location-based services every day and every night, like Kareem, Uber, and these all require your uh, position. And we know that this position comes from GPS, global positioning system, navigation, and it's all started from astronomy. Yes. Okay, I guess uh, we are done with questions and time is very short. Too. Uh, so uh, in the end, uh, the presentation and everything was the uh, whole session was really amazing. I learned a lot and the activities were very engaging as well. Uh, and also most importantly, how you hi highlighted out the difference between uh, the jargon research and most importantly between science communication, how we can be effective in our communication and be more uh, uh, be less of jargon and to easily communicate to public how people can understand. So that was very important point which you raised. And besides that, the scientific accuracy and all. So I really appreciate your time and thank you for giving us this talk. And 
uh, onwards, uh, I will share those, these links with the Intels and uh, I will, I might also share your email so they can ask any question if they have. Uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, I guess you're done. Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation. I will share my slides with you so that you can share with uh, Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Yeah. I see you. Bye.